All right, lizard wizards from the blizzard. Let's have a look on them. Um, first, we'll go through the stats, then talents, then priority or rotation, and how to use cooldowns. A little bit about damage on the end. So let's start with the stats. Uh, for Evoker, preservation is not quite clear. So far, that's the first time I've seen a healer. You don't want some pump some stats, and others you don't like. It's they are all good and bad, and not bad. Obviously, any stat is improving. You, but bad on the way. There's there's something that other stat is giving, and this stat is not giving. And uh, so, like overall, what you should do, on preservation evoker, is to pump item level, like seriously, just item level. And second thing, that item level should be Riddle Mastery, because the Lizard is healing quite a lot, sorry, Evoker, but I will, <laughs> if I say Lizard, I mean Evoker, I always call it Lizard. And you should, that item level items should be without Mastery, because Mastery is only increasing healing, not damage, so that is not optional, uh, optimal in the dungeons. Because if you can use it on damage, and Lizard is healing quite a lot without even that mastery. And you should have more health than others. And in N, plus it's not so easy to have more health than others. When some characters have better defenses like you and stuff like that, so that's also not very useful. And from the other stats, it's best to keep balance. Like, I was checking logs, not even today, but previous season, and often I was checking logs in N. Plus from the lizards and some people are getting full critical, some people are getting full haste, some people are getting full versatility and then other stats. Uh, so that's... That means you can play any of this stat and still be good and you can still even push with that without any problems. But if every single stat is increasing something and you don't really have some preference, oh I really like haste, I want haste and stuff like that, it's best to keep in balance, so similar critical, I, I'm trying with my, well, I don't know what I have, I have Versa Flask. This is Vida Versa Flask, what I have with Versa Flask, yeah, 4000. And similar numbers. And I have a little bit too much mastery, but, you know, I found the item level. <laughs> and I guess some set pieces are giving mastery, yeah, lots of mastery on hands, lots of mastery. In shoulders, hands and legs, there's lots of mastery. I bet I have some uh, and you have mastery in this unique crafted shoes. But these shoes are eating your mastery and giving a high stat, so not so bad. So optional what you want to prioritize, but go for item level without mastery and the rest of the three stats. It's nice to keep balance if you like in favors to have something else. Go for it. And just quick notes about the stats so we can a little bit understand uh, why it's good and why it's not so good. <laughs> so from Critical Strike is really good because most of the lizard uh, abilities for healing and doing damage. There are Empower Spells, there are Fire Breath, there are Dream Breath and there are Spirit Bloom. They have 30, 30, 30 seconds cooldowns or 20 if you have talents for Spirit Bloom. Or Debret is also very strong damage ability. And that means you cannot just cast heals like with other heals. Oh, I'm casting Regrowth, the Rejuvenations, or oh, I'm casting Chain Heals, I'm casting Flesh of Lights, or Holy Lights with the Priest, and stuff like that. With Lizard, you have cooldowns. And that means you cannot shorten that cooldowns because uh, yeah, some of them are scaling with haste. But uh, these, the strongest healers, healers one, that's Dream Breath and Spirit Bloom, they are not scaling with the haste. So you want every 20 seconds, if you can critical, you have more value from that spell. Because haste is not helping to get that cooldown break. Obviously it's helping you to cast that spell faster, but you still, still have cooldown. So if you are more critical, that spells are doing just more. Because you cannot shorten it. And also it's helping for reversion that is increasing the duration when it's do critical hit. So that's another little extra. But the downside from Rikiral, it's you are not making that unit. You are charging it slowly. You really want to, if you want pump heal, you are charging a lot. Three seconds of charge time. Again, we want to full three seconds of charge time. And sometimes you don't have time for that. So that is 
God is not profiting because you don't have haste. So, yeah, something plus, something is minus. For the haste, you think everything is faster, you can do like link frames, you can cast faster, you can do damage on single target faster, everything is going faster. And scaling, you have cooldown reversion and temporal anomaly is scaling with the haste. Cooldown for that. So, that's how it's good haste. But, again, then you have your big abilities on cooldown and it's haste is not really helping to heal with them because critical is better for that. And with versatility, well, it's increasing everything, but in comparison to other stats, it's not increasing as much. So that is plus or minus. Because, you know, full, full versa, we will be still good, but now we can do 10,000 versa, that will be overcapping a lot. Not giving as much, but yeah, it's increasing everything, but not so much as critical or haste. But uh, one big plus is giving our protection. So survivability is really nice how much I have. Damage taken decrease 10%. That's really nice for pushing. That's why most people are pumping a little bit more Vesa when they are pushing. You know the stats. Mainly on healers, obviously. On damagers is sometimes pumping versatility is really, really sacrificing your damage. So that's from stats. A quick note on trinkets. Get a Rashag one. Scale from the first boss. It's really nice. That should be like two best trinkets. And I have this one because I don't have scale. And I think I like it because one lizard weakness is to when you really need to pump single target a lot. And this is single target shield. A little bit too many cooldown. It's not so great, but <laughs> I don't have replacement. So I'm wearing it. I quite like it. I'm not saying it's, it's some best trinket on lizard, but it's compensating. Because you really don't know what to click when you are healing. Single target. You really can cast just leaning frames when everything else is on cooldown and your cooldowns is AoE anyway. But that's how you heal single. You are healing single to AoE. Lizard things. I will spell it bloom on the first cast. <laughs> but that's kind of waste. Right, let's get to talents. There's not so much variant here as in all the healers. From the right side, this is like more for the damage. Uh, more from the healing, you can go more for the damage, but it's not even damaging that much because we lost four piece that was pumping really good damage and was really working with this talent that is increasing your damage by your health and it was pumping instant cast that ability of living flames, instant cast and empower by another 20%. So with old four piece, this was absolutely blast. So this is more for healing. Uh, if you want more damage, you just you sacrifice some healing, then you get these two talents. Uh, mainly this one, but this is not that huge difference in damage and then it was previous season because, you know, 4 piece, old one. But on the other side, new 2 piece is absolutely excellent. And from the left side, there we have some uh, utilities we should be considered to picking up. Uh, Spirit Walk is uh, really important to just, when you have affix you need to control them. Spirit uh, Spirit Walk. Sleep Walk. Sleep Walk is ability to cast on them. That's your only ability for that. So definitely we are picking that for Affix. Uh, then um, this week especially is Wing Buffet because it's Sanguine. Uh, so you are shorten your Wing Push. So you can just move some enemies from Sanguine Pools when there are casters or just are standing or moving. <laughs> so we are doing basically lots of damage because we are preventing healing of enemies. Hmm? It's damage ability. And then usually they are picking together, and it's important the addition to Oppression Road because it's removing Enrage. So when it's a Raging Wing, definitely useful. Even if useful in like Black and High Hollow when you have the Spinner Boys, <laughs> they are doing very brilliant, like 10 seconds, and Millis hate them. And if nobody can dispel Enrage, it's two talents, but you are help Millis to do damage. Quite a lot, but it's long cooldown when you're not eating a lot of targets. Oh, where to get that extra point? So you have two defenses here, and you know, three points just don't die without them. Uh, if you are a little bit uh, more fancy, then you should take Operation Roar, Silver Talents, and it's a little bit hard to time because when you are not in voice and you are not planning and you are not 
early high push group usually don't plan some stuns or something like that, but when you have like 50% increased scroll control, if somebody is placing AoE stun and stuff like that, when you blast this before that, it's absolutely amazing. Alrighty, uh, if you want the stuns, I will have import string under the video, so check there. And let's zoom on the abilities, or priority, or rotation, however you want to call it. So we are starting healing with the reversion. It's cheap for mana, and it's usually it's extended by the critical strike. It's healing more, because when you have more haste, so it's healing more then. So that's why critical and haste on similar levels on the wizard. Um, basically, somebody is taking little damage, you are clicking reversion. It's that simple. Uh, it's re really useful to spread the reversion on whole group uh, uh, with uh, echoes, temporal anomaly, or just manual spreading echoes. Uh, that's. Why? Oh, I healed a little bit here? No. What happened? Never mind. It's still here. It's just a <laughs> person showing 1.3k. Uh, this one was some 20 and the reversion is quite high. There's splitting two reversion one is the original and second one is I don't know which one is which, but the other one is split a uh, spread with the echoes. So you can see it is not healing when you need you know heavy AoE damage is coming, it's not healing a lot. But when you have it prepared with the spread of echoes, it's overall healing is quite a lot. Yeah, I have more than 50% overheal because I was always keeping it on targets. So yeah, keep it spread on targets. Uh, it's not as important as in previous season because it was enabled us to do more damage or even healing as Forset was proking us. So before that, in uh, season 1, we was always spreading click it never armor, spread to everyone and we are profiting with a single target heal or just a single target damage to free procs of healing cast. So now, now we are just getting this for the damage. If nothing is happening, we are not longer spreading anymore if we are used from previous season. I still spread it because I'm just used to do that. Uh, so let's move on for the next ability. Uh, another one is which one? A Verden Emergency. That's also very nice to cast in on cooldown because it's cheaper mana. It will zoom you and you like the zooming. <laughs> and it's quite only sing like original single target, the human lizard, and quite strong one. And not as just with the jump, but then you have life green talent, so you are healing the target even more from heals you are getting some. So if you are blast following AoEs, after you jump on someone, you have 5 seconds that AoE is healing the target more. So yeah, that's very potent single target. And I usually use the Verdant Embrance also for repositioning, so even casting on target that is full, uh, usually, ah, PvP, I cannot jump on anyone, I cannot jump on this guy, hey. I usually jump on some ranged that isn't back, so I can position myself to cast the frontals uh, or just shoot them for an anomaly. And ev everything that is just, you know, because you want to hit the ranged. Even when you're standing like this, let's see if it's okay. Yeah, see? You don't need to exactly be on them. You, you are healing a little bit, your frontals are a little bit healing behind you. You just need to learn. Like I was standing here and I hit everything, so. You don't need to be exactly on that uh, farthest range yet, or stand behind him, you can be a little bit in front of, and it's really useful to use that reposition because you even heal him, and he usually need to heal because when somebody's standing out of the group and you're, you are healing by front eyes and AoE is usually, that person is just low as hell, so you want to jump on him, it's the best thing, I, I don't know, jump on target or I jump on myself, never mind. And I passed them for Anomaly, they got some absurd, they got Echoes, and all of them. Bam, just doubles. So it's nice to follow. Like, when you need to heal the group and somebody's standing a little bit off, jam on him. It's really nice for the positioning. And it's also giving you a buff. Uh, how it's called? I forgot. It's a Chaos of Ysera. And Dream's Bread, huge, very absolute huge buff. And then it's a Link Flame buff, 100%. We are not using that as often. Uh, Usually you have time to cast it um, once. You cast it once, then you use the Dream Bread. Then you cast it second time. Dream Bread is on, still on cooldown. So we cast it with the Living Flame. 
and then again we are casting uh, the remember it depend on your haste because it's scaling like, like right now I have it perfect I have 15 seconds cooldown dreams red is 30 so like one cast dreams red second cast flame flame if you need to use flame flame obviously I often don't use flame flame because now you need to cast it so <laughs> little bit more tedious So we have reversions, we are jumping, then we are getting to spreading echoes. We have tempora anomaly and we have echo, like spell echo, just echo. <laughs> it's easy to forget, echo is also healing, it's not healing much. I, I didn't use it as much in the dungeon. Do I have some echoes healing? Yeah, 25 casts. And it's overhealed a lot, well, potential 1 million of healing. It's, it's healing something, but don't think about Echo as a healing and don't think about Temporal Anomaly as Absorb. Absorb is nice and something extra is definitely something, but what is not? It's... You are not using it for Absorb, you are using it to spread Echoes. So forget about healing of Echo and Absorb of Temporal Anomaly. There are nice bonuses, but think about these spells just spreading echoes because they are much more important than that absorb that little heal extra from the echo. Uh, temporal anomaly. We are blasting them. It's costing a lot of mana, but we are regenerating mana and we are casting disintegrate. And uh, if you have time to spread echoes by casting echoes, it's better because. Uh, Single cast echo is duplicating 105% of healing, and temporal anomaly echoes are only 45%. So the that single target echo ability is almost double, oh, almost about more than double. It's double and then extra 10%. Uh, what I mean? Then the country grind. Let's let's say it's 10. Let's move on. It's not time for that. So if you have time and you really want to heal, spread the echoes manually, we also can afford to do that because now we have the 4-piece bonus. I mean manual casting abilities. Oh, that's not but I can show the 4-piece. When I'm casting Empire abilities, we are getting stacks. And after we have 4 stacks, we are getting Essence Burst. And in 3 seconds, we have another Essence Burst. burst. That means we can we have 2 free casts of uh, Disintegrate or 2 free, two free casts of Echoes. So that means it's much easier for us to cast Echoes, even when we have talent uh, for the six Essences. That means we can cast one, two, three Echoes from Essences and two Echoes from the Burst. That's five Echoes and we have five people in the group. So you can able, when you plan it, you can be ready with five Echoes and we will heal that even more. But usually we don't have time always to do that and we want to do some damage and get some mana ba back. So we are blasting this in Criticate. Yeah, it's... First heal in the damage. They're also buffing. They buffed uh, previous salvation and Walker Disney by 15%. Is it's, it's funny that it's present damage. <laughs> it's a lot of fast bread and living flame, but it's still an too, so that explains a lot. And uh, and also we have more cards because you know the essence boost. So I mean we have some extra essence boosts we can cast in more freely. And that now we can afford to spread echoes manually in a dungeon with echoes, not not always with them for anomaly because we have a little bit more freely use of our essences. Thankfully, that essence boost from force it. Uh, and another situation where is echo a bit better, a bit better, a lot better when you need to heal, like single target, double target. Then it's time for anomaly to cast on one or two targets is definitely more useful. It's better to cast a just single echo that is much stronger and just follow for some anomaly. I often when nobody's dying and just tank is a little bit like I will just place one echo, follow it and I I'd hate it here because I don't see numbers. Okay, it's still millions because it's bug but <laughs> yeah, it's it's nice simple combo to just keep tank pumped. It's getting like 15,000 every second, something like that. So when you want to heal single target, two targets, and you don't want to waste 
uh, Temporal Anomaly or your group is too spread for Temporal Anomaly, go for some ca target cast. And there's also other abilities that also with like same group, Temporal Anomaly Echo, they are friends, they're working together and are choosing which one you want to prefer because both of them are using for same stuff to spread any echoes. Then we have two friends that is Dream Bread and Spirit Bloom. They are two friends because they are two huge cooldowns, they are empowered abilities, so you are charging them and they are healing tons, that's your main heal. Bread and uh, Spirit Bloom. Um, obviously, also your main heal is uh, to spread off uh, res reversions, but you know, it's uh, always healing, but it's not healing like in the burst. So I don't think about it always healing a lot, but, but it's crazy healing a lot, but not fast. <laughs> so when you really need to heal AOE, you need to choose some other abilities. That's okay. And I want to talk them again together with these two abilities because usually you are choosing which one you want to use first. Then if you have one on cooldown, definitely you are using the other one. That's, that's simple. But it's very often happening, you have both of them ready, because you didn't need to heal for a while. So, which one to choose? On the paper, with the numbers, Dream Bread is much better. Even not buffed Dream Bread, Dream Bread is better. Uh, but then we are in reality, and we need to think about if we can hit players with that. If people are too spread, saying whenever, whenever it's better to cast Spirit Bloom because Spirit Bloom don't care where people are standing. Spirit Bloom care about who has lowest health and obviously if it's in range, but doesn't matter where people are standing by like front-wise, like when you're charging this ability, you can see. So when group is spread, even when Spirit Bloom will heal less, it's much better to use. If our group is stacked, then Dream Bread is better choice. You should always try, and if not try, learn to use Dream Bread always with another ambulance after you use that, so you can use that 40% buff. That's our 40%. As is, look at the numbers. This is healing 103, 104,000. This is healing 80,000, 81,000. So even without empowering, uh, Sorry, <laughs> even without empowering, it's not that true, because then the Spirit Bloom is healing another 60% from 2 piece. So without empowering, we can say it's healing same target. Similarly, with Empower, Dream Bread is even healing every single target more. Uh, but another difference that Dream Bread is for 5 targets and Spirit Bloom is for 4. Usually, Tank is not dying, so it doesn't really matter, but when you uh, like tanks, uh, like monk, uh, he's not like dying, but he needs some heals to survive, because he's not obviously he's not bad that kind. You don't want to even bother. And so then, oh, I want to cast Dreambird because he's healing one more target. So that's why it's in paper. It's much better ability. And then uh, very nice to choose the other. Uh, I really like Dreambird. I think I heal much more with Dream Bread and Spirit Bloom. Uh, I like Dream Bread to just click it, empower it, and first rank. And they are just, it's pumping a lot because it's like the healing over time 70,000, 17,000 every 1.7 seconds. And I also obviously like to just multiply it with Temporal Anomaly. Uh, because it's just healing dot, healing dot, and when you are getting some AOE damage, but it's not so huge, but you need to heal it, just click that one, and people are getting slowly healed, and that heal is not to overheal. So that is bonus, yeah, because <laughs> you don't need to burst it. So if it's where it's hierarchy, it's usually always casting on first chance because you really need to. People would drop to twenty percent health, and bam, back to hundred percent, and bam. I drop back to 20%, but then we're going 20s and so, 20s, 21s for weekly, and so I prefer to just have ticking hot on the targets. So I'm just healing over time, and it's not overhealing as much. Obviously, when you need to heal faster, you just charge it to full. Quick note 
what I want to say on Spirit Bloom is when you are applying Echo and ah, some target dummy and buffs then you, you can see only one debuff but uh, on my side this is 12, this is 17 uh, I mean you don't see two debuffs or debuff two healing over time effects uh, because we, we would expect like when you are multiplying the dreams bet you have two healing over time effects uh, but with the spirit bloom you have just one hot one healing over time effect uh, but that mean uh, it's not that you're losing some extra healing that one hot it's uh, healing 40 percent on that together from that two heals so when you have echo and you cast spirit bloom you will heal it with spirit bloom and then echo will heal it with spirit bloom and that hot on the target is together like one strong spirit bloom and that healing is from that one so it's happening together yeah, for the other abilities and it's not really important abilities we have living flame and i'm also casting the counting here the fire breath living flame if we have nothing to click everything is on cooldown you need to heal there's nothing to do you're just casting it's not really effective i'm consuming as a single target. Oh, I'm creating everything. Obviously, that is effective when you are creating everything. But if there is nothing else, this is definitely a thing to do. You're just spamming it, and also, you need to really pump single target, but we shouldn't need to, but this is how we do it. So, if you have Dreams Bread or you have Spirit Bloom, use that even for single target. Bread for single target is still useful. Obviously, don't use it when you need to heal AoE in the moment, so. This absolutely, I have not nothing to click. I need to heal. I think flame is just panic button, let's say. And fire breath, it's. I like to put it between the healings because you should always put it on cooldown, even on first charge, and they are not. And we are not dying so soon, so that that won't be consumed. To get what? Oh, I just got it. That uh, essence burst from the forset. Forset herald. So because the uh, fire bread is an um, empower ability, and empower ability is giving you stack, and after you cast four, we are getting essence boost. If you know essence boost, you can cast three heals or three damage. Three echoes, three disengage, three something. And with that essence boost, you can cast three damage or three echoes. Feels. Um, last to notice, there's one special heal, one special heal on the special school and Emerald Blossom is this shiny circle. We are still not using. <laughs> you can see some players. Uh, I, I don't like that. I was trying that. Some players are uh, instead of that talent, are playing over Boros. I mean, when cast spreading echoes. Or empowering or Ness, uh, Spirit, uh, Spirit Bloom, Emerald Blossom. Yeah, on paper, it's more effective healing. It's quite effective because when you have 150% increase at heal, and usually with, even with Essence Burst, you can cast this freely, but it's still costing you 12,000 mana. <laughs> and you need to essen three essences, that's quite expensive. It still heals a lot because that empowered by 150% is a lot. But what you will find out, you will probably be that it's quite annoying and it's eating your echoes and nobody's standing in that and things like that. Uh, you can try play with it, but I, I don't recommend. <laughs> if you are looking for a guide on a walker, just play this with much simpler. And this, I, I think it will, if you don't master it, it will lower you, your healing and increase your healing. If you're not using it like you should. So... If you don't want to mess, just... I don't want to use it even. And not a lot of people are using it even on pushing, so... You can try. I don't recommend. But on the paper, it's better way. It's better done and it's more help per second. More performance for you. Up to you. Uh, let's have on cooldowns. Uh, from the cooldowns, we... Well, I will quite. On the lizard. And the first thing to use is Stasis, short cooldown, very, very powerful. Uh, what we can do that, 
We are storing three abilities. What we want to store? We don't want to store reversion or single class echo. Because that is not that special. We want something more special to our reversion. So as I always our empower spells because they have cooldown and they're healing a lot. So we want to use them again soon. I mean we want to store it in stasis. Other special thing when you are casting empower spells in the stasis, it's best to fully charge them. Obviously not you don't need to be dream bread with one or healing over time, then pump, or boost healing immediately. And when you cast full charge in the stasis, it will remember and it will be casted again on that full charge. So you don't need to cast it twice in three seconds, or it doesn't, or it doesn't matter. It's worth to cast it, like to prepare and fully charge and probability to max tags. I, yeah, port one is usually three seconds. Well, depending on your haste, obviously. If you had zero haste, I don't know how long I would cast it. How much percentage? 20. Eh. Not much, but definitely is <laughs> different. I saw some uh, basic combo that is mostly most used. Uh, you will jump before, so you have Cause of Peace rebuff. You press the stasis. You spread the echoes. Then you following bed, depending if you don't need to heal in burst, you fully charge. And the last ability under our empower spirit bloom and is usually also fully charged. Now before you use the store heal in stasis, you want to jump again, because the jump is not stored there. And then just release that empower 40% of bread will be used, and then cast spirit bloom and everything will be copied by echo. Uh, if you prefer you can do uh, Spirit Bloom on a host instead of Dream Breath, but it's again your preference if how many people are healing or whatever. But again, on paper, Dream Breath is a better choice to use it on Spirit Heals and then just follow by Spirit Bloom. Usually, it, this combo will overheal so much, it, you don't even need to care about which one is first, so it's absolutely up to you. Then we have Rewind. Rewind is absolutely beast. Uh, we don't even wear talents to make it shorter in the dungeons. Usually, yeah, usually I lose like three times in dungeon. I, it's more or less I'm using a panic button. And I'm not counting like, oh, I have rewind. I I will lose it now. All right. It's usually I don't have any other cooldowns because the like, dim breath and spirit bloom. If you have ready, you will heal. You will just heal through that damage that is coming. So usually. When I don't have anything to click, I'm clicking Rewind. Over this so absolute huge AoE damage, Rewind will do so well because it's giving 100% damage. 100% of what we just got. Uh, it's 50 coming here, but he increase by 100% when not in the raid. So that means dungeon is healing 100% of damage. And then you're you increasing that by your mastery. So it's, I don't know, 120% damage of you just got. And. Well! <laughs> you will feel that. You will feel that healing. Just don't click it before the damage. Remember, you need to get damage to just record damage you are taking and then you are healing as much. It always heals for at least 22,000, but that's nothing in comparison <laughs> by this hundred and thousands that you get you just get in the last five seconds. So this is absolutely strongest pull on, but we are not really need that so often, so we are not even wearing talent for that. Obviously, if you want, just sacrifice it from here. And forgot to mention, when I was talking about reversion, it's increasing our healing on targets, so that's why it's also nice to have it spread on a whole group when you are healing AoE. The under cooldown is a bit special one, because on the first look, it's not looking that much special. Obviously, it's panic button for you. If you are in stun, in trouble, anything is happening, you are you got a gag and second boss in freehold, and you can move when you are in AoE, you are pressing this, pressing this. You can cast it in stun, in silence, in disarray, in anything. You can just start casting it. It's healing you loads. Loads. And then, if you are full, overheal is healing your group. So it's usually... Panic button for your self defense is if you are looking real bad, but it can be instant heal. 
Can you combine it with spreading echoes? Alright, let's do temporal anomaly. Won't be perfect, but will be a lot. <laughs> you didn't get echo, so I'll jump on that card again. If you have spread echoes, at least three, because you will get. You need at least uh, three echoes because you will get live bind. Because you are jumping, and the target you are jumping on will get live bind. So you need at least three echoes, and if one is not on you. So three echoes on other targets, and you will get one automatically, and uh, your target will get live bind too. And then the live bind will be spread through the echoes to other targets. Uh, so, three echoes if it's not on you, if it's on you, you need four echoes. And you will jump on the last target that don't have echo. So, let's spread echoes. Target won't get it. Which one didn't get it? This one. I will jump on it and it immediately follow by communion and look at the numbers. Absolute huge healing. Giga shot healing. Uh, this target was he getting more heals because life, life being since uh, 10. 0 0.7, I think, is nerfed, and it was always giving 40% of healing shared. But right now, it's depend on echo. So if you have a single target echo, it's healing 105% from that 40%, and if you have only temporal only echoes, it's healing only 45% of that 40%. Uh, let's say like normal person is like 18-19% you are healing of your healing you are shared. And what does that mean? That means shiny stuff, brutal pump to your group. It's just a few seconds, so think about that. And obviously think about it's a little bit weaker, a little bit half. Half as good when it's from temporal anomaly. But usually when I use it in temporal anomaly, I didn't need to heal more. It's healing a lot. And people were full after I used it with temporal anomaly echoes. So I didn't, really didn't have any problems with that. Maybe even I'm pushing later this season. There are some bosses that are pumping so much damage. Oh, in that case, I can quite expect it. you want to spread single echoes when you are using that. And that will double your healing, basically. Almost. And then we have tip of the scales. It's too many cooldown and it's just cast. Allowing our Empower ability to be casted on full charge. I often use it. For damage, because tech is dying too soon, I want to steal it. <laughs> and I don't really need to for healing, but yeah, obviously, uh, when you're struggling with heal or very high keys, you definitely, if you don't have time, you need to move or anything is happening that is preventing you to just stand for three seconds and just cast, click TV of the scales, and you have automatically full charge and power ability that is saving you three seconds. And it's off global cooldown, so it doesn't matter what you are doing right now. Just absolutely just saving you three seconds, not taking you even global. So, you need to click and power faster, just do that. Uh, as for the damage, we don't have four piece, we are more sad. For the damage, always, 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 always fire red on cooldown. Oh, obviously, when Peg is dying, like last enemy is living for another five seconds. Just keep it because you are empowering this for three seconds. Just have it fully charged. So I keep it for next pack, and you want to fully charge? Why? Because you have the leaping flames. I think it's called. Yeah, leaping flames. That additional target. If you are fighting single target or you need to heal AOE, you can even use it on yourself. Bam! It's nice AOE healing when you are fighting boss that is single target. It's very nice to fully charge it. So another forecast. It's just fine to lowest health friendly targets. So it's that nice of healing that you're not costing zero of your mana. That you're costing just a little bit time of your charging ability. And another thing that is increasing your essence boards from the four piece. So it's also important to cast in cooldown. And if there is AoE, they are blasting Dream's Bread. It's even more on single target, but obviously it's a bit more waste because it's hitting every single target in the pad. For some decent damage, how much it did? Nice. Always resetting. Uh, if that is done, disintegrate, air casting, and living flames. Uh, I have some bigger app for that. You can see. Oh, it's fully charged. Bam. If you have stored healing, cast it because you know you want to use it. The healer is 
that is saved. And then you're just casting Disintegrate. Because you just don't have essences to non-stop cast Disintegrate, that's why it's wise to just don't cast it yet. You have charge healing, use that healing because you need to do something else between the cast of Disintegrate because you don't have essences for always casting that. And if you need to move as you strike, that's best thing to click. But even if you are doing single target or single target, even that we are doing AoE, it's still better to cast Disintegrate because look at the damage comparison. This is 76 target, 76,000 damage, and as a strike, it's uh, 12,000 damage multiplied by 3. It's much less anyway. It's instant though, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. But it's still, you will Disintegrate or Charger Healing. Do that because even when you have 20 targets, it still do better damage. Because this is hitting just three, and you need to talent for that anyway. Because default is just two targets. Yep. So that will be all. My little lizard guide. If you want to see, like I'm playing this build or playing lizard, I you can see here down. You can exactly see which target and which ability I'm using, and I, I will link some video videos under the video. I'm doing M plus with the lizard, and you can see everything what I'm doing there. You can see. And I'm playing this lizard. And yeah. So, thank you for watching. And goodbye.